Hello from the Riverland. I'm Dr. Cheryl Wilson from Living Well with Dr. Wilson and this is my trusty assistant Harvey and what we are going to call Health with Harvey. I've been asked by a few people in the community to put some information online so here I am talking to you about osteo. It's not uncommon for someone to come into my rooms and tell me that they've got osteo which ultimately means bone. And what's happened is we've shortened down a couple of conditions, osteoporosis and osteoarthritis, into one word that tends to overlap and get some confusion. And I believe with clarity, we can avoid confusion and allow you to be able to make better decisions to best support your best health. So sometimes when someone has a diagnosis of osteoporosis, there's some confusion that it may be the cause of pains in their joints which is typical of osteoarthritis. And then sometimes with someone with osteoarthritis seems to think that it might be that they're more likely to have fractures, which is what is the concern about osteoporosis. So when we're looking at osteoporosis, we're looking at a condition where our bones are becoming what some people call brittle. So they're not as strong as they used to be. So when we look at bones, we're, they're very much like a sponge. And we, our bodies, add calcium to that sponge and make it nice and strong. And we do that in a variety of ways. Mainly in our youth, when we're in about our teenage years, when we're hopefully eating quite healthily, we're laying a lot of calcium down. And then gradually through the years, it starts to come out of the bones. So it's very important to have a diet with an adequate amount of calcium. And if needed, you may need a supplement. The other thing is, that's very important is vitamin D. So vitamin D, we all know, comes from the sun. So you still need to slip, slop, slap in a hat and do safe sun practices. But it's important to get out there and get some sun on your skin. If that's not enough, then you may need a supplement of vitamin D. Because vitamin D is what takes calcium out of the blood and puts it in your bones. And that's what keeps it nice and strong. But there's some other things that can be counterproductive, like smoking, drinking too much alcohol, having too much caffeine, or some medications like steroids can make our bones thinner. So if you have any worries about this, certainly meet up with your regular GP and they can look at what's called a bone density test, where we can look in and see if it looks like your bones are getting thinner. So aside from calcium and vitamin D, it's a very important component is that our form follows function. So we tell our body what we want it to do. And we want it to be able to be strong and active. And so we need to be so to stimulate the bones to put calcium back in the bones and keep them nice and strong. So that requires weight-bearing activities. And so walking, uh, going for a run, putting the laundry up on the line, yoga, going to the gym, whatever takes your fancy. If all of these are not sufficient, then your regular JP, GP might consider that going on a medication would be appropriate. Now, when talking about osteoarthritis, we're talking about in the joints. That should have this smooth, beautiful, glistening cartilage on the end so everything runs smoothly. But as we know, things don't always go smoothly in life and we can have injuries. Sometimes we just genetically have predispositions or our jobs have been really hard on certain joints. And those, that cartilage starts to wear down. And when it's rougher, it starts to roughen up the other side. And then when it starts to get past the cartilage and we get bone to bone, we start progressing through osteoarthritis that can make our joints hurt. And that's any joint. Our necks, our backs, our shoulders, our hips and our knees ankles, fingers, toes, any of those joints. So what we want to do there is support our joints as best as possible. And we do that a few ways. One of them is not making them work any or harder than they have to. And so we don't want to carry any extra weight. So that's where nutrition comes into play and being physically active. If we sit on the couch and do nothing, then we're just not going to put any energy or resources into building good cartilage and it'll take little to nothing to aggravate those poor arthritic joints. But if we get out and get active, we're telling the body we want some good functioning cartilage there and that stimulates it to help keep growing. 
But it's important to know that what I call use it or lose it, but very important, don't abuse it. And that gives you that barometer. So I don't want you sitting on the couch, but I don't want you bungee jumping and hang gliding. And then you play around with it until you figure out, am I sore during after the next day? Then you have to back off a little bit and keep as active as possible so that you can stay active. Studies have shown that we need long, strong, smart muscles, is what I call them. So stretching around the joint, as well as strengthening. And then there's something called proprioception, which is just a really big word for having balance. Because if those long, strong muscles don't know when to contract to keep you in alignment, then they're not being as helpful as they could. So by doing some very simple balancing exercises, you can improve the efficiency of the muscles around your arthritic joint. Now there's medications to help with pain relief at times. And there's actually been some research that shows something as simple as the herb turmeric can help. Just a quarter teaspoon, pennies, the treatment, have it in the morning with like a latte or something. And for a lot of people, it can be very effective. The other thing is there's some injection therapies that can be helpful, as well as, as a last resort, something like surgery. So if any of these things are concerns for you or you have any questions, I encourage you to go see your regular GP. And in summary, with Harvey here, with osteoporosis, we want to keep you fit, strong, and healthy and not having fractures in the forearm or along the hip if you have a simple fall. When we talk about arthritis, we're talking about changes in the cartilage, then ultimately the bone, in the joints, in the hips, and often in the knees. So thank you from Harvey and I. I wish you all the best today. Take care and enjoy the day. Bye now.